live on Facebook? Yes. Yes. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, let's settle down and let more people to, to come in first. Hi, how's everyone going? You know, feel free to comment on the chat box how you're feeling. You know, let's chit chat. Thank you for joining us today. You know, taking time off and, and spending your one hour with us. If you're watching this on Facebook, feel free to join us on our Zoom link. We've commented the Zoom link in the chat box below. But if you feel if you if you want to stay on Facebook, feel free. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to just comment your question at the comment section and we will answer accordingly. Hi, I'm seeing more and more people coming in. Let's see if there's any familiar faces. Ah, I see a few familiar. Hi, hi, welcome, welcome. Uh, we will start the session in one more minute. I'm going to wait for more people to come in. You know, how's everyone doing? Let me know, comment in the chat box. How's everyone feeling? So the format today will be similar. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to just comment at the, at the Q&A section and then we will answer all of them accordingly. So what's going to happen is I'm going to do a quick introduction. With, uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction and then Mr. Locke will do his sharing session. Right. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our first episode of our new series known as Investing 101, where we talk about everything and anything related to investing. My name is Kelly, and I will be your host for today. If this is your first time tuning in our session, Pitchin is Malaysia's leading equity crowdfunding platform, also a registered market operator known as RMO with the Securities Commission of Malaysia. Pitchin Equity has successfully helped startups collectively raise more than 100 million ringgit today. Sorry. The most among all ECF platform in Malaysia. Equity crowdfunding gives investors the opportunity to invest in fast growing companies that have high potential for growth, where the public retail investor can invest alongside angel and sophisticated investor, investor. For more information and to find out how you can invest, head over to www.equity.pitchin.my. So today with me here, we have Mr. Locke. Um, Mr. Locke is a qualified lawyer for Malaysia and Singapore and a registered patent, trademark, and industrial design agent for Malaysia. He has been active, actively involved in the intellectual property field for the past 20 years. He was awarded the world's top 1,000 patent practitioner for, by IEM magazine for the year 2013 to 2021 and IP Star Award for managing IP magazine for year 2019 to 2021. Mr. Locke holds a Master of Laws degree from University of Cambridge, United Kingdom, an Executive MBA degree from INSET, France, Singapore, and EMBA from Tsinghua University, China. Mr. Locke is a managing partner of Pentas IP Group, a regional professional firm with operational offices based in Singapore, Malaysia, Brunei, and customer service offices in China and USA. PIPG provides integrated IP filing and consulting works covering Southeast Asia countries. He's also the founding partners of Global IP Southeast Asia Private Limited, an IP agency and consultancy boutique from firm focusing on Japan and Southeast Asia region. Apart from IP agency and consulting work, Mr. Locke is also actively involved in angel capital investment in IP-based company in Malaysia, Singapore, and China. Currently, Mr. Lok is the Secretary of ASEAN Business Angels Council, Malaysian Business Angel Network, MBAN. Mr. Lok is a general partner of IPO Capital LLP, a VCMC licensed by Security Commission of Malaysia. Wow, that is a lot. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Lok, and I bet you can't wait to learn from him. Mr. Lok, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Kelly, for the introduction. I feel a bit shy right now. <laughs> I gave you too long a rest to me, I guess. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I think today, uh, I, I, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Pitch In for uh, inviting us. Uh, today, I'm representing Mben and IPO uh, Angels uh, to talk a, a little bit about uh, angel investment uh, in Malaysia, particularly, uh, and also some of the uh, tips, you know, in doing angel investment. And I guess... Uh, uh, equity crowdfunding is quite related to angel investment. It's just that, you know, uh, equity crowdfunding, probably you have uh, uh, more people investing at the same time. Uh, but uh, for angel investment, uh, we, we only like open up to the uh, 
so-called the accredited investors, right? So, so I think that's different, but uh, the uh, investor in the equity crowdfunding platform like Beach In will also be looking at, uh, you know, what are the things uh, that you need to look at when you want to do investment? Uh, what are the valuation and all that? So today we will talk about that, right? So uh, uh, allow me to share my, uh, my screen. Oh, sorry, Let, allow me to share my screen. I'm still not sharing, right? Yeah. Can, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, oh, sorry, I need to go back to the first slide. Yeah, I'm going to go in full screen right now. Uh, I, I hope that today's uh, session it will be a very uh, interactive one. Uh, you can stop me, right? If you have any questions or Kelly, you can just stop me if you want any elaboration from me. Uh, about the uh, angel investment, about angel tax incentive, you know, about all, all relating to, uh, all information relating to angel investment in Malaysia and MBAN. Okay, uh, I would like to start probably, you know, by sharing with the audience a little bit about angel investment. Right? Uh, uh, okay, uh, Kelly has uh, introduced about me just now. Uh, I've been actively involved in angel investment for the past 10 years. Uh, you know, uh, in fact, uh, we, we run a club for IP owners called IPO Angels. And uh, when the government wants to set up a governing body for angel investment in Malaysia, so uh, in the form of Malaysian Business Angel Network or NBAN, they invited IPO uh, to be one of the uh, founding members of NBAN. So a few, a few of us all grouped together and we formed NBAN. And through NBAN, we lobby to the government for some tax incentive for angel investment in Malaysia. I'm going to share about the tax incentive later on. Okay, uh, you know, uh, just a bit of uh, sharing about angel, investor, angel, angel investors. Uh, by angel investors, uh, we actually refer to high net worth individual uh, who invest in his personal capacity. Uh, uh, you know, this high net worth individual would have some disposable income and they would like to uh, uh, bet on the startup or early stage businesses uh, in, in exchange for some equity. Uh, usually, angel investments will bring to the table uh, not only money, but also knowledge, experience, and network. I guess a uh, startup and early stage company would need to have a lot of support for them to, to scale up their business, you know, to be uh, sustainable and to grow their business. So uh, what we, we hope to bring to the table is uh, we would like to also bring in our uh, connection and also experience to guide the, the startup uh, companies and the early stage companies. Uh, the Asia angel investors will uh, work in a group. Usually uh, we form a club so that you know we can co-invest together and we look at uh, tech and non-tech companies also. Right? It depends on the individual clubs. As for us, IPO, we focus on uh, tech companies only because we are looking at uh, uh, companies with good IP. So usually uh, the companies with good IPs are usually tech technology-based company. So a little bit on the uh, sharing about, you know, when does angel investors invest? Uh, angel investor invest typically at the early stage. Uh, where it, it, it is at the seed stage where, you know, the business is still uh, cash flow negative. You still need external funding to cover the operational costs, right? This is the stage where we call it the valley of death. This is the stage where, you know, startup have an idea. Uh, they put together a team. They want to move out to the market. So they need funding to do uh, operation, they, they to run the operation, they need funding to prepare the prototype, uh, they need funding to do marketing, but the cash that you generate from the business uh, is still not enough to cover the operational cost. So you need uh, funding externally uh, to prolong the runway. Uh, with the you know uh, emergence of equity crowdfunding platform uh, like Pitch In, uh, the startup and the early stage company have additional sources of funding. In the past, you know, when we started uh, Angel Clubs uh, in the early 2000, uh, there wasn't any ECF platform. So the only way uh, these uh, startup companies can get funding is actually to go to their family and friends, right? Uh, to borrow money from people they know. 
And if those sources are exhausted, then they probably can look for some business angels. And, and we thought that, you know, it is good that we, 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 we group together, right? To identify, you know, to pool together resources and then to, to, to evaluate uh, companies in a more systematic way uh, where we can invest and then come up, come, come up with a structure. So during that time, you know, we went through a lot of try and error. And, and, and when we formed the uh, Angels, uh, Malaysian Business Angels Network, we actually uh, uh, learned, you know, we sent our executive director to UK uh, to learn from the UK, uh, the, the London Business Angel. So they give us a lot of guidance and, and, and then we, we learn along the way to do our teaching. And now, you know, the government also, you know, would like the more people to invest and then they have, uh, they, they, they license out uh, the equity crowdfunding platform like Pitchin. And uh, Pitchin has done a ma marvelous job, you know, raising fund for the early stage company. Usually company at the early stage when they are cash flow negative, uh, it's impossible, virtually impossible to get uh, backing from the bank. Like that financing is totally out. The only way is, you know, equity financing from the angels now we pitch in and maybe some grant from, from, from creators. That's where the startup can get funded, right? So, so this is when the angels comes in. And, and, and why, you know, uh, why, why, why we want to do angel investment? I think everybody in the crowd would agree with me that, you know, the world is changing. Uh, the pace of technological change is unprecedented and it's been accelerated by uh, COVID, right? Now with COVID, all, everything has to change. Now we talk to you through, you know, Zoom, right? We don't have to gather together in a hall and, you know, we can interact with anyone, anywhere, digitally, right? Though this is, uh, this is, these are all enabled by technological uh, changes. And this technological changing uh, changes is, uh, the pace is accelerating and, and, and driving this, change are uh, the the change is happening everywhere right it is in the manufacturing we have e-commerce replacing the uh, traditional uh, retail uh, we have the uh, grab car uh, re replacing uh, the taxi we have the uh, uh, airbnb uh, replacing the uh, sorry we have the uh, airbnb uh, you know taking over uh, some market share from the hotels. So it is affecting all sectors. So, you know, what we see today will not be the same next year or three years later. Uh, so, so, so all these technological changes, uh, they are being led by entrepreneurs, by the startup, right? Uh, they, the, the entrepreneurs are the, at the forefront of this change. And uh, the, the entrepreneurs, uh, 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 they, they need uh, funding and uh, as angel investors and as investors in the equity crowdfunding platforms like Pitchin, you have to have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to be part of the change, right? We can participate in the change by, by investing in this, uh, uh, this uh, agent of change. The, the entrepreneurs are, are leading the change and as angel investors, as investor in the equity crowdfunding, we have a chance to participate in the change. So, uh, you know, I always like to use the Amazon case studies, you know, to share, you know, uh, with the, uh, uh, put the investor in the startup, the potential upside in investing, in betting in the right horse at the early stage, right? If you look at the uh, financial chronology of, uh, of Amazon, uh, uh, Amazon was founded by Jeff Bezos uh, in uh, 1994. Uh, at that time, uh, the, the, the share, per, the, the price per share is uh, 0.01 cent, right? Uh, 20 years later, uh, now in 2020, uh, the market valuation of the company has exceeded 1 trillion US dollar, right? So the, all this happened within these 20 years uh, at the advent of internet, you know, uh, this uh, entrepreneur saw the opportunity uh, to move businesses online, to move uh, e com to, to move commerce online, and and he, he formed uh, this uh, game changing company. And uh, if you can participate early as an angel investor, you know, you look at the uh, the, the share, the, the the value of the share. Uh, 
uh, in August 1995 when you know uh, Amazon needed fund to expand the operation. Uh, he, he, he went out to the angel investor. Uh, he sold the share at uh, 12 cents per share, right? And then uh, and and uh, to, to, to extend the runway, he opened up another, another, another round of funding for the angel to syndicate of angels to come in uh, at the 33 cents per share. And then uh, as the companies grow and the business gain more traction, uh, they, they went to the venture capitalists and eventually IPO. And you know, now you know, Amazon is one of the biggest company now in the world. So if you came in as an angel investor, if I can share the screen, uh, you know, if you came in as an angel investor, uh, the first 20 or so angel investor put in about 50,000 each in, in Amazon, uh, collectively hold 1% share in amazon.com. Uh, today, each investment, the 50,000 uh, invested in Amazon uh, would be now worth around 6 billion US dollars. Right, that's 120,000 times return. So, so as angel investor and also as investor in uh, uh, in the equity crowdfunding platform, uh, these are the unicorn that we are looking at. Right, we are hoping that one day we can put the money right betting in the right horse, and they can grow uh, uh, fast and uh, grow big one day, and uh, there will be capital gain. Uh, in our investment this is what we are hoping for so this is a uh, one case studies uh, of you know the potential upside that angel investors can gain investing in the right startup company at the early stage so uh, as angel investors uh, i guess i think as equity crowdfunding platform investors uh, you will be asking the questions what do we look for right when we want to invest so what are the criteria for investment right uh, Based on our 10 years of uh, experience, you know, uh, I can share with you uh, uh, what, are, what we look for when we invest in early startup. Because early startup, uh, they are still at the very early stage. We don't have much of a track record to look at, right? So we need to uh, actually bet on certain uh, characteristics. So uh, there are three things that we actually look at uh, in the... Uh, uh, as an angel investors. The first thing that we look at is actually uh, the management team. Uh, we, we place a lot of emphasis on uh, the, the management team, uh, whether they are able, they have the, a, a track record of uh, delivering results, right? Uh, we want to see what they have done before and uh, whether uh, they are uh, able to carry out what they promised to the investors, uh, whether they have the necessary passion in them uh, whether they operate as a team, usually, you know, we prefer to have a team where you have, you know, someone who is aggressively going out, you know, to gain a business and the, 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 another person at the back end, making sure the operation is intact. You know, if you look, if you have the yin and the yang team, right, that's quite important. Uh, so we actually, we actually scrutinize the, 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 the team. And of course, apart from the team, we also look at the uh, business itself, right? Uh, it, it, it is in the business uh, of uh, high growth, uh, whether uh, the technology uh, is highly scalable, uh, whether it, it is able to command high gross margin. Uh, and uh, for IPO, we actually look at the quality of the IP, intellectual property owned by the, the, the company. Yeah, this is actually one of our criteria. So we, we actually look at the, uh, uh, the, the portfolio of IP asset. You know, we, 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 we very much for our, our, our IPO team, we very much like the uh, deep tech company, company that has uh, a, a lot of uh, potential to disrupt the existing technology. And, and then if we can, you know, sometimes we might have to bring in some uh, external member to come in and with that, probably we can grow uh, the business uh, to, to the level we want. Yeah. Uh, so Mr. Lau, yeah. speaking to the, yeah. about the management team, how much yeah. of an emphasis is placed in terms of their university background, right? Like when you say the team, what, what does it consist of? Is it their background? Is it their working history? Is it their university? What do you, what do you look for? Uh, we, 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 we don't really look at the 
qualification, academic qualification, uh, we, we actually look at, you know, whether the person has uh, got a history of uh, making things happen, right? So, so if you have run a business successfully and you exited before, uh, we like that kind of, uh, of, of uh, entrepreneur because the entrepreneur uh, has delivered, you know, they are able to carry out their plan successfully uh, they, they, they are uh, not the, 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 the type that will give up easily, right? Because w w at, th at this stage, what they have is a set of plan. Uh, whether, you know, you can make the plan into reality will very much depends on your implementation power, right? So, so uh, but of course, if you are looking at the deep tech companies, right? So we would like to also look at your credential, right? What, what uh, you are developing something very deep tech. So probably your, 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 your technical qualification might come in handy, right? It all depends. Uh, if you are investing into a company that is a very much uh, 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 a business innovation, right? There's no technological innovation. Then probably you will want to look at, you know, uh, their, 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 their passion and also their ability to deliver. So we have one question from Wei Hao, right? How do you gauge the char characteristic of the management? Because, you know, when everyone pitch, you know, they can copy that confidence, they can copy, you know, how the Steve Job pitch. But in reality, how, what, what, other, what other characteristic do you, do you look for? Aside from just their track record, right? Yeah, it's very hard, right? So you, you would like to, to... Is this a first impression thing? Like the first impression that you oh, get. I, I don't think so. I, I think you, you would like to check on, you know, the person through the referees and all that, whether mm -hmm. what kind of person he is. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, uh, yeah, sometimes you, you, you might have this sixth sense that this person is able to deliver. Right. right. What he right. It's hard to say. It's hard to right. say, but it's based on Sometimes, you know, you, you, you want to check uh, the, with the referee. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might want to look at the track record. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may want to... Do you always do a reference check or is it just sometimes I, I you do, feel I like, do. okay. I do, I do. I do. I, I so do. we have to answer your question, maybe do some reference check, ask people they've worked with before. Hey, how is it like working with them? What yeah. is their characteristic, right? Yeah. Okay. Very, Sounds very, good. Very, I hope they answer your questions, Wei Hao. Yeah, I think this is a million dollar question, right? <laughs> the same like when you get in a, your a, 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 a staff, right? How, how do you know? You, you need to observe. You need to see right. the result, right? Do we have to pay a lot of school fees for this? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Because this is a early stage company. Right. And, and you know, it's the person that makes things happen, right? If he comes up with a business plan and this business plan doesn't work, that person will be able to turn it around. I can share an, an example with you. you know, I, I know of this team. They are doing online event. So with the COVID, they are doing offline event, right? Something like running the marathon, uh, you know, doing this uh, physical event. And when the COVID hit, you know, the entrepreneur would have to think of a way to make it online and not to give it up, right? So he has to innovate to... To move, just and, get it done. <laughs> yeah, you can do marathon at your home, and then you know people still running and win award in 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 a confined space rather than going out and and do the race. So so this this style of people will make it happen because uh, they would have to deliver. This is a promise they make to themselves and also to the investors. But that's the most important quality uh, in the startup companies. Okay. We also look at the deal itself, valuation. Yeah, I, I, I think valuation is, is important uh, in, in, in the sense that, you know, every value, every figures uh, proposed by the companies has to be justified, right? Uh, you, you cannot be a figure plucked from the sky. And then, you know, there's a lot of uh, courses going on about evaluate, you know, evaluation of startup companies. All these are very subjective, right? At the end of the day, it boils down to whether as an investor, you buy it or not, right? Whether you, you buy that figure or not. I don't know how Bishin does valuation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have so, an agency that does it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think pitch in, pitch in also do a fundraising uh, mm -hmm. in the equity crowdfunding before. Mm -hmm. And I think the founders uh, managed to convince, right? I think you value yourself at many times the PE, but, mm -hmm. but, but the, the founder managed to convince the investor. Look at my track record, right? Mm -hmm. I'm the largest now in town. So you have to look at my past to believe that I can deliver what I promise. And this valuation is based on how many times of PE. Mm -hmm. So you have to buy it. Yeah. Do you, you have any tips and tricks for the audience on the floor, you know, especially as a retail investor or you know, wanting to be an angel investor? How do you know they're conning you? Is it do, do you use the method where you know the, the projection of it or do you use the uh, revenue to predict? But most of them are you know seed startup, right? So how do you how do you even how do you even how do you even uh how do you even rather than them justifying, how do you what is what is the calculation that you can have internally, or is there a brief way that you can calculate and say, okay, this makes sense? Uh yeah, I, I don't have uh, a very very structured way. Uh, it's very much on our interview, our talking, our answer question, you know, whether they are consistent and all that. Yeah. Try to find out whether it can be trusted or not. It's right. based on you, you, you trusting whether they can deliver. I right? see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so very subjective. <laughs> whether I trust someone is based on, you know. And I, and I noticed that, uh, you know, you know, sometimes when, let's say, like the marketplace is so hot right now, their valuation will somewhat increase a little bit higher than it should be because there is demand, right? Does it, does it happen a lot? Yeah, it can happen. Sometimes, you know, uh, certain sectors, they are the hot, they are the, they are, they are the hottest uh, uh, industry to be in. Mm -hmm. So valuation can go very, very high, mm -hmm. uh, but it fluctuates, right? Right. So, so it, it does happen. Just like our share market, it's very much mirror our share market. Today, what is the hottest now in the share market? Probably, you know, the glove, glove has gone, come down. Then the next will be coming up, will be another industry, maybe the semicon. So it, it comes up and down. Uh, the same applies to the startup uh, scene, right? Where maybe now it, it might be something related to the healthcare. The healthcare is very hot right now. But you know, after COVID, what will be next, right? So, so, so. So, would you suggest the audience to think a step forward? You know, before their valuation goes crazy, they'll okay. Let's start looking at yeah, companies can, that will make set in two years. If you can identify what is the next wave, mm. the next uh, big big thing, and you invest before the next big thing, that would be the best, right? So, so what do you think will be the next big thing, Mr. Lok? I, I, I really don't Is know. it tourism? <laughs> <laughs> just just I, kidding. We always believe that, you know, digitalization, mm. uh, we always believe the big data, AI, you know, is going to drive the world post-COVID, right? Uh, as we all can see, uh, people will be moving from the physical to the digital world. Mm -hmm. So all this will be, uh, you know, I believe the next big thing. Okay. Yeah. So these are the three, I think, general things that we look at. The team, if you, and the, the IP for us, IP is important, and the valuation. And, and we also have angel tax incentive, right? Angel tax incentive that we, we can introduce to you afterwards, where you can limit your downside, the downside risk. Meaning, whatever you invest, you can claim as a tax uh, uh, tax. Uh, uh, benefit, right? You can deduct from your taxable income. So people will feel that, okay, I, because this is a bet, right? You invest, you, you, the chances of succeeding is probably one in 10. That in the world of VC, the world of angel, you, you cannot hope to have 100% return in, you, 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 the, the most is probably 10, 20%, uh, uh, you know, make it, then you will consider good already because it's a lot of unknown at the early stage a very high risk and hopefully you know by uh, selecting the right one you know we we can uh, make the return from the one or two that is successful so the angel tax incentive and i believe the ecf the government has also a similar in tax incentive right for people who invest so uh, this is good for for people to invest and due diligence is very important yeah we never can never uh, uh, 
place enough emphasis on due diligence. So we have a question related to due diligence. It's by Wei Hua. Uh, Wei Ho, what kind of due diligence do you usually do to validate the valuation? Oh, uh, what we work, what we do in our group, right? The IPO group is we usually have uh, a champion because our investor come from across the board of the industry. Uh, they are, they are you know, people in the manufacturing, people in the IT, people in the banking. So we would have someone who know the industry a little bit better to champion the case, right? And the champion will probably go into the, the you know, all this proposal or the numbers proposed by the investee company, right? By, by the entrepreneur and try to validate and, and see whether... Uh, this is something achievable, doable. You know what? What? What you say makes sense to someone who is in the industry or not. Uh, this is what we do in our due diligence. If the person who, who is in the industry for twenty years say this is not possible, then you know the ex the outsider will probably not go in. But that has a downside also because the person who is in in the industry might be living in a in a box right he's not thinking outside the box so we also miss some good deals right we have a very good very experienced banker in our group so he championed a a a, a case from philippine uh doing the uh uh the salary back uh p2p lending right Sal salary back lending and and he coming from a bank say yeah, this projection is too optimistic, so don't invest. At that time, when he came to us, the valuation was one million, right? Three years later, valuation went to 70 million. We were advised not to invest. Everybody was so excited, but he said, don't, this is not doable. So we missed the boat. So it happens that way when you are too conservative. There's no hard and fast rule, right? It's all depends on luck sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you say that if we were to copy or look at our neighboring country like you know Singapore or Philippines, there is somewhat of resemblance? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Oh, so let's say we have, uh, let's say, uh, let's say like you said, P2P lending, right? Payday loan is big in Philippines, but not yet in Malaysia. But what if, a, what if a company wants to do that? Do we take, do we benchmark the success of Philippines and add it as a factor into the valuation of the startup? Uh, yeah, you can refer that because when we do valuation, right, uh, one of the way of valuation is the market approach. So we, we may look at the valuation in Philippines for a similar startup and look at us here as a market approach, market comparison on the valuation. So mm -hmm. why not, right? Okay. When, yeah. So let me just move on, right? I think, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, I, I just want to share some statistics, right, that we gather throughout the year about, you know, what makes a successful angel invest, investment. So one of the uh, sharing I can uh, uh, give, I can, I, I can share here is, uh, I think it is, uh, angel investment is a very high risk business. So we usually uh, would advocate uh, having a portfolio, right, rather than putting all your egg into one basket. So statistics or studies shows that if we have a portfolio, the chances of having a return or not losing money is higher if we have a portfolio. And this number, the statistic in, uh, I think done in UK show that uh, if you invest in 20 company, you have 20 in your portfolio, chances of you having a 100% it, it, it is almost certain that you will not lose money if you have 20 in your portfolio, right? This, this is actually uh, shared uh, uh, by some studies done in the UK. I guess, uh, I guess this can be similarly applied to uh, equity crowdfunding. Yeah? So if you want to diversify your risk, you probably want to have a portfolio of investment rather than you back in one horse, hoping that that horse will be, you know, uh, will give you a home run, right? So this is uh, one of the things that we look at, uh, diversification through a portfolio. Uh, the other thing is, uh, like what I mentioned just now, due diligence is very important. This study was done by the uh, London uh, uh, Angels, uh, Angels Club, and uh, 
it, it shows that you know if you do more than 20 hours of due diligence on what you want to invest in the chances of you getting 10 to 30 x return is higher you you know yeah this is uh, if you look at the statistic 20 uh, 30 times return 10 to 30 times return is higher when you have uh, a, a lot of due diligence so due diligence is very important you you cannot just say that oh this company looks good and okay just you know the founder you know you like the founder so you just invest you need to do a due diligence and how how we did our due diligence is we have a champion with industrial experience uh spearheading the due diligence uh, process uh, the, the next thing is industrial experience affecting uh, outcome. So I guess uh, if you are in the industry, you probably know the water, how deep the water is right for you. Uh, because from the outside, you probably would need some time to learn the industry, the, the, the so-called the market forces. So if you're in the industry, probably you would appreciate it better. So what we did in our club is we have champion from the, that industry to champion a case relating to their, their industry. So this is how we do. And uh, industrial experience actually play a part. Or you, you invest in, in, in space that you are familiar with, right? Chances of you not going wrong will be, will be probably higher than if you invest in a totally new area and, and you, you don't have much info. That, that's the reason why we, we, we like to invest in a group. We, we, in, a, in a club, we have people from different backgrounds. So we rely on each other's expertise to, 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 to guide us in investing. So when the champion say go, we will just follow him because the champion has experience in the space, right? So it cuts down our time of doing uh, do too much work and it's impossible to have 20 in a portfolio if you want to invest you know and know everything right so you, you let people uh, to specialize in certain industry to, to, to work together right so another uh, sharing is uh, yeah I think studies also show that if you are in the board right if in angel investors when we invest we usually send someone to the board so the board person can monitor the uh, development of the company, right? So we 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 have uh, more info and 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 uh, you know we have regular meetings also uh, with this board involvement. But as a equity crowdfunding platform, I don't think you can sit in the board, right? But uh, what uh, Pichin has done is probably do a regular reporting of the the states of your investment, right? So you will know what is happening. Yeah. That is correct. Uh, we that do any reporting important. in every company you invest on Pigeon. Yeah, that's very important. And, and also uh, be a partner, right? As an angel investor, we like to look at ourselves as a partner to the companies that we invest in because our interests are all aligned. If you succeed, we succeed. If you, if you, you, if you uh, fail, then all the investment will be burned, right? And, and at the early stage, chances of your investment going bust is very very high so so it is good that you know you can help the the companies to grow and to to you know to be sustainable so uh, these are the three rules that we always uh, look at you know and when we invest in the startup we have to make sure that uh, they don't run out of money because they are a startup at the stage of angel investment are still cash flow negative. So if they run out of the money, you have to cut down or shut down the company. So whatever investment you put in will be down the drain. So nothing is left, right? So, so not letting them run out of company. Sometimes you may have to come in to help to raise more funding. Sometimes you, know, you may have to give some loan to make sure that they continue the, the runway. The other thing is execution, right? Execution is very important because, you know, it's easy to, to, to come up with a business plan, but executing it well is not easy at all. Which is why the team is important, right? Team is important. <laughs> and the person running the show is the most important person. You know, I, I shared the example of this company that runs event. When you have COVID, they have two choices. They have to shut down the company 
and you know burn everything or they have to innovate to make it into an online event company and they continue to operate right this shows that you know the the founder uh, is someone that makes things happen he doesn't give up easily right you can change the business model make it uh, you know continue the operation that is very important uh, so one question from the floor, uh, what is a reasonable time frame to expect a return of your investment when we invest in startups? Uh, yeah, uh, injury investment is also known as patient capital. Patient, you have to be patient. So uh, we did a studies on the uh, holding period and we found out that, you know, usually we, we have to hold for about five years before we start thinking about exiting, right? Five years is the, the, the median, the, 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 the standard holding period for injury investment in Malaysia based on the studies that we, we have done. Uh, okay, one question related to MBAN. Uh, yeah. When a new startup is in the valley of death zone, sometimes asking for the startup to, uh, sometimes asking for the startup to get an IB, the process and cost can be exorbitant. Is this a prerequisition for MBAN? Uh, can you just repeat? I, okay, so uh, when a startup is in the valley of so uh, valley of death zone, uh, you know, yeah. um, sometimes uh, you know the, the startup are asked to get an IP. The process is expensive and costly, right? Is this a prerequisition for embed or at least IPO? Uh, usually, we will invest with some IP already in place. Uh, they may get the IP from some grant money, some spin-off from the university. They have already completed the research. So they have the IP registered already, usually. Uh, but during this, uh, you know, it, along the way, they might have some new IP. Uh, so if this IP is critical, right, we would advise them to also protect it because that's the only asset you have, right, with this IP. Uh, because we are looking at deep tech, so with this IP, you can have barrier of entry. You can have like freedom to operate. So we need this IP in place. So for us, it is important, but for certain other clubs, they probably not look so much into the IP, right? So we usually can tap into some run available. Uh, Cradle have some run, Mossy have some run. So you would want to use the grant money from the, regu the government because at, this, uh, that, at that early stage, the government has to help, right? To, to protect those IP. So, so the grant might come into handy in a situation like this. Okay, thank you. Uh, so what, uh, okay, so I know a lot of people are asking, you know, in terms of ROI, maybe you can share some of yours or your club's experience. So a, lot of, a lot of the audience are interested in terms of what is the average ROI, right? So let's say I invest in a company, you know, hypothetically. And then next year they say, okay, I'm offering you an exit as, at 3X. Do I hold or do I say, okay, time to go because 3X is good enough? What, what would you recommend? What is, a, what is a good number? So when we invest in the startup, I think uh, usually we look at about maybe 10 to 20 X return, right? That's what we look at, at least what my club is looking at. Okay. 10 to 20 X. Why? Because, you know, you know, many will falter, only a few will survive. So that 10 to 20 X, you average down, probably you have, you know, three to five X return, right? So, so yeah, I, I think, I think if you can have, depending on your investment period, if you feel that, you know, 3X is good for the amount that you put in, why not, right? There's no hard and fast rule, but uh, in average, you know, the, the, the target uh, uh, returns that we look at in Malaysia, through, based on the statistics, majority of the investors are looking at 10 to 20X for the investment they make in the early stage company. That is backed by the research that we have done interviewing about you know 100 over angel investors this was a project undertaken by nban uh, two years ago and we we have some statistics that we can share with you okay so uh there's another question i think this is more related to you know not angel investor but you know and maybe as as you mentioned that investor would like to be considered as partners and not investors but let's say we are only a retail investor and we cannot be part of it what do you think uh, yeah. what is your opinion and what we can do into consideration of the company? Yeah, I, I guess uh, as a retail investor, you're, 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 you're probably not, uh, uh, 
in a position right to influence the uh, it's so tiny you know <laughs> uh yeah i guess uh i guess you know you can uh yeah i can i can input here what yeah, yeah. you can do as a retail investor is you know promote it to your friends and tell them about the product make sure yeah. the business survive and you yourself as an investor you should be proud and loud and be like hi i yeah. let's say if you invest in pitch in you're like yes i invest in pitch in you come to me and say kelly i'm your investor and i have some idea and you know yeah. we'll, we'll be more yeah. than happy to chat yeah yeah I, I think i'm a retail investor in pitch in also right <laughs> uh, yes so, Mr. So, Lo is also our investor yeah a retail small retail investor uh, yeah. But I think, you know, uh, we always want Pichin to do well, right? So when there's any opportunity, we will share with Pichin, hey, Pichin, would you want to work with this Canadian group? You know, So that's what I did, right? Yes. So the way you can help. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, even on ECF or even as a retail investor, if you think there's something that could benefit the company, always feel free to reach out to the management team. I'm sure they will take into consideration. Yeah. Any help will be good, right? at the early stage yes correct yeah so uh, a bit of promotion for at malaysian business angels network i i come here today to represent i hope we can have more angel investor joining us and uh, just a bit of introduction uh, of malaysian business angels uh, uh, network uh, it was formed in 2012 2013 right and it was formed uh, it was actually uh, one of the part of the effort by the Malaysian government to grow uh, angel investing in Malaysia. So they want all the clubs to come together and uh, the government can propose some tax incentive to members of this club, right? So, so, so uh, uh, we, are, we are kind of like uh, the, the face for the angel investment clubs in Malaysia. So, so it, it, is, uh, it comprises of many angels clubs coming together. Uh, we have, I think, seven or eight clubs right now. And we, we are welcoming more clubs to join us, right? And then uh, and, and as part of the deal with the government is, if you want to claim the angel tax incentive, you have to be a member of uh, Malaysian Business Angels Network. Or you can be a member of the clubs that is associated to Malaysian Business Angels Network and members of the club automatically will become member of MBAN and also enjoy the tax incentive. So if you are a member of IPO, you can also be a member of MBAN at the same time and you can enjoy the tax incentive. So, so different clubs have different uh, charter, different objective, right? So, so some, some clubs are very interested in maybe, uh, you know, certain agenda for us is on IP uh, business, right? So, so you can come in directly to be a member of NBAN and uh, start you know, participating and learn about angel investment in Malaysia, or you can join through one of the uh, affiliate clubs right, uh, of, under the NBAN group. So uh, we have been around uh, for the past, I would say close to eight years. Yeah? And we do a lot of uh, educational program like workshop. Yeah, you can join any of our workshop. Uh, we have a deep dive workshop, two days deep dive workshop, where you know in the workshop you learn about in the A to Z of angel investment, including the term sheet, you know, all the legal documentation. There's a module on valuation, yeah, and there's also a module about you know evaluation of companies, right? Sh sh sharing of experience, or we have a half day workshop, right? You can uh, we do a lot of that uh, almost monthly. And we also have a deal flow uh, monthly pitching. Uh, we call it the Enter the Tiger's Liar, uh, ETTL, uh, where we do it every last Friday of the month uh, between 3 to 5 p.m. You can come and see uh, uh, the, the program or the deal flow that we curate for our members. And at the club's level, at IPO club's member level, we also do our own pitching every quarterly. So, you know, so there's many uh, deal flow uh, coming to the club, so you can see. And we also invite many of the uh, 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 companies that uh, raise their fund through the ECF platform to pitch through our, our angels uh, 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 pitching session. And uh, the other thing that we, have, we are doing now is to engage with the public sector, the government, uh, trying to lobby for more tax incentive for angel, 
right? We have managed to extend the current angel tax incentive to 2023. What we are doing right now is to try to convince the government to come up with the corporate angel tax incentive, right? So corporate angels, we can treat corporate as an angels investors. So hopefully something will happen. We also do regional connectivities, right? Regional connectivity because we know that Malaysia is just one small entity in ASEAN. So we created this ASEAN Angels uh, Alliance of which I'm actually very active in. So, uh, uh, so far we have five countries uh, in our ASEAN Angels Alliance. Uh, we have Malaysia, we have Singapore, we have Vietnam, we have Thailand and also Philippines in this uh, Angel, uh, ASEAN Angels Alliance. This under, under ASEAN Angel Alliance is actually a, incorporated in Singapore. It is a company limited by guarantee based in Singapore. So, so by becoming a member of NBAN, you can also access to our regional deal flow, right? You, you can have uh, pitching coming from Vietnam, pitching coming from uh, Thailand, uh, and also our club, our, our, our entrepreneur can also pitch to, to, to the company uh, outside Malaysia or investors outside Malaysia. Yep. So, so these are- like Sorry. Yeah. I would like to remind the floors that we have 10 more minutes to this session. So if you have any Q&A, uh, any okay. question, please feel free to drop into the chat box and we will answer accordingly. Okay. Okay. Uh, so one question from Mr. Ho, uh, Wei Ha is that what is the criteria to join ICO as a member? Oh yeah, uh, in, in order to be a member of NBAN or any of the clubs, right? Uh, you have to be accredited. Uh, you, you have to be, uh, let, let me just share a bit on that, you know, in my following slides. Uh, yeah. To, to, to be a, a accredited, right? Uh, to, to be an angel investor uh, and you want to be accredited for this angel tax incentive, right? Uh, usually, okay, I, I think this is a slide. Uh, you, you have to have a certain uh, uh, criteria to fulfill. Like for example, you must be a high net worth uh, earner uh, making about 180,000 a year. And also, you have high net worth uh, individual with asset of 3 million and above uh, and a tax resident in Malaysia. Uh, the reason why the government imposed this criteria is uh, angel investment is a high risk activities, right? So you, the government doesn't want you to, you know, burn your life saving, right? You, you must have some basic uh, asset to, you know, so probably you diversify some of your investment into these high risk activities, uh, just like venture capital. If you want to invest in ventures, uh, capitals uh, fund, you have to be a sophisticated investor. So this is a criteria that you have to fulfill. And uh, uh, then, then you, you have a passion in angel investors, uh, angel investment, you know, you are, all, you are always welcome. Uh, currently we have about, uh, as a group, we have about, uh, 300 over members, right? We are expanding our membership. We, we hope more people can join us. 90% of angel investors are from KL area, uh, Slangor area in the Klang Valley. We hope that, you know, there are more outside investors coming in and join us. So uh, yeah, you, you, can, you can join us as a member if you fulfill the criteria uh, anytime, you can get in touch with us. And if you want to be one of the subgroup, you know, you can also contact the individual group. Uh, to, to come in and join us through the group, through the individual clubs and become a member of NBAN indirectly. That is also a possibility. So, so uh, let's take two more questions. Uh, yeah. One is, so I one is, but, sorry. We, we can do Q and A now, right? I, I yeah. open up to the floor, <laughs> I guess, because of the time, I don't want to drag you too long. Yeah, we can just take Q and A. So this is uh, angel investor related, right? How does, angel investor uh, exit the investment. Second part, when we join MBAN as angel investor, do we invest as individual or a group? Can individual exit an investment on their own? Okay, uh, yeah, the, you, 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 can ex, you can exit on your own. Uh, you can exit on your own because angel investors, angel investor is different from venture capital. They are also early stage venture capital, but venture capital will manage the fund on your behalf and you know, usually you let the, the, the fund manager decide. But in angel investment, once you invest in, you are 
a shareholder, right? In your in your own right, so you can exceed if you feel that uh, you you have someone uh, some good investor wanting to buy your share, but usually uh, your rights is also subjected to the shareholders agreement, right? Sometimes you when you invest, you you have to sign a shareholders agreement. The shareholder agreement have terms like you know uh, you need to sell back first to the owner. This is called the right of pre, uh, first uh, right right of first uh, you know you, you have to sell back to the existing shareholder before you can sell to outsider. Sometimes you have to tag along rights, you have to drag along rights, you have to subject yourself to that to that agreement. So uh, if you can uh, fulfill the conditions set in the agreement, you can sell your share. Okay. And how do we exceed? Uh, it, there are multiple ways of exceeding. Uh, the, the, the most common way is, uh, you know, a second round funders come in, like a VC, they would like to buy out all the early stage, uh, the early angel investors. So you sell out your share to the subsequent round of investor. Uh, if you are lucky, you can hold your share up to the point that the company may go public. You can sell your share in the open market. Or, or sometimes the founder would want to buy back. They have an agreement with you to say that, okay, uh, after certain years, uh, you know, I can buy back from you. So this, these are the different ways that you can exceed, right? I, sorry, I noticed there's a lot of questions regarding this, so I'm going to summarize it all, okay? Uh, okay. Mr. Lok, so let's say okay. I'm on Pigeon right now and I see a company that's looking to raise funds. What should I do before I invest? What would you what would you advise me to look at? Because you see a company that is in Pichin now, what do you want to look at, right? Yeah. You I guess you look at the three things, right? You look at the member, you look at the team, right? Whether this guy has sufficient track record uh, to, to make the plan a success or not. Can he deliver? I think the the, the, the human factor is very important. Uh, secondly, you would like to look at the uh, the, the, the business itself. You want to see whether this business uh, has a high chance of scaling up, right? Uh, it has a good margin. Uh, it has a, a very good uh, growth potential. And we like the deep tech companies because deep tech companies have certain barrier of entry. People cannot easily copy, right? When you have a good patent, then if people want to copy, you can stop the competitors. Uh, these are the business and also the founders. And definitely you would like to look at the valuation, uh, whether the value is something uh, attractive to you. Uh, you. You look at the future growth, uh, will the company uh, be growing fast enough uh, to make your valuation look cheap, right? So, so so these, these are the things that uh, we, you look at. I think it's the same as when you invest into company. It's just uh, uh, when we do uh, angel investment, it's just that when we do angel investment, probably we'd have more chance to do due diligence. We, we can actually look into the books. We can actually uh, go deeper into the company to drag out you know, a lot of details. Uh, but as a equity crowdfunding investor. I'm, I'm not sure whether you are in a position to interview the founders to get so much detail about the ventures or the business. Yeah. We have a pitch in Thursday where we invite companies that are raising money to speak to the audience. And so audience are free, are free to ask any questions to them. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like a root show that you do, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess the, the, same, the same principle, you look at the track, uh, you look at the, the horse, you look at the Jockey. These are the three things you look at. It's the different uh, level of detailness, right? In, in our case, we can be more detailed, mm -hmm. but as a retail investor, probably you can't. Uh, Catherine Ree, you rose your hand. Would you like to speak? Uh, you have a question for us? I'll, I'll allow you. Oh, she removed it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so two, let's take two more questions. First question, what is the cost of joining MBAN? Okay. Uh, the cost is 800 ringgit. Uh, as a membership fee for two years, so you can you can come in and if you are you belongs to a club, it's the same. You also pay eight hundred, but four hundred will go to the club and the four hundred will go to uh, Mbank. Uh, that is an agreement that we have. So the fee is the same. 
irrespective of whether you join directly or you join through a club. And it, it lasts for two years. The, the membership fees of $800 or ringgit is uh, for two years of membership. Thank you. Uh, let's take one last question. What is the average amount that angel investor invests in a startup? Okay, we do a studies, right? Uh, and we find that maybe I can share the slides with you. Yeah, I have these uh, slides prepared for you to answer these questions. So you're, you asked me how much is the average investment uh, according to the study that we have conducted together with Creators and Asian Financial Institute. We found that in Malaysia, the medium value of investment is at about 200,000 per deal that we do, right? So uh, uh, averagely uh, 200,000, but yeah, I, I, I guess I will agree. I will agree with this. Uh, th this is looking at per in per investor about hundred fifty to two hundred thousand. So when when we invest in a group, maybe we can invest up to about you know three or four will come together. Uh, we have about uh, uh, six hundred or eight hundred thousand investing in one deal, right? That's what we do. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Lo. I think our time is up. It's currently five p.m. So. For like, would you have any last advice for the the floor of audience who wants to be investor or who wants to invest like you? Uh, I, I guess I guess uh, uh, I would like to look at the uh, uh, the reason why we invest in startup. Right, uh, there are many reasons why we invest in startup. Uh, some are for uh, monetary reason. Uh, some are for altruistic reason that you want to uh, you know share. Uh, your experience, you want to give back to society. Uh, so, so, so I think uh, we we do see a lot of uh, reason to invest. Right, the, the world is changing, and uh, we can be part of the change by investing in the early startup. And I think if you feel that you know uh, you, you you invest for your own altruistic reason or you want to actually make a monetary gain. I think it is something that you, 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 should, you should experiment. And then if you feel that uh, this is something that you are comfortable with, then slowly you can, uh, you can probably uh, increase your, your amount of investment. I think uh, equity crowdfunding is also a good way for you to experiment, right? You will start going into equity crowdfunding as a retail investor, you invest, and then you feel that, oh, that's good, right? I, I have good returns. So probably I want to, to, to go a bit deeper, then you probably can start becoming an angel investor. That, that's what I, 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 I think, right? This can be an evolution uh, as, a, as an investor. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Lok. So for all the, all the audience, if you want to rewatch this session, it's available on our Pigeon Facebook. Don't forget to like and follow, and I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much, Mr. Lok. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you Kelly. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.